Hello fans, and I'm back with a treat. It turns out I might be one of the first people to review Invaders Issue 3, which is a good thing, because I kind of wanted to be the first to review something. And we start off with the cover. It is a good cover. If a bit, uh, I thought I'd want a bit more action to it. It shows the Winter Soldier sneaking around a military base that is studying Nemer, Nemor and the Atlanteans. He has his guns out and he looks boss. <laughs> but I still wish he was under attack or there was a little more action instead of just being sort of a, a bland cover with him just sneaking around, but it is a good cover with great artwork by Butch Geis. The last two times I reviewed Invaders, I got his name wrong, but his ni name is Butch Geis. Uh, sir, sir, rather, uh, sort of rather cool name, I have to say. The first page is yet another, another reprint of the first issue's cover with the writer Chip Sudarsky, artist Carlos Magno, Color artist Gamaris and cover and the rest. We start the real first page with Iron Man telling Steve Rogers that they should go and attack the uh, the Atlanteans with the Avengers and stop a war from starting. But Captain America tells tells uh, Iron Man that he's trying to stop the war. He wants to talk it out peacefully with Nemo, while while Iron Man. Tony Stark says it's futile. There's just going to be a war, and they should just finish it before it even starts. Steve Rogers says he's known him since World War II, and that he sh Iron Man should trust s trust Steve Rogers that they will see this through and end it peacefully. And they are off there on their way to a base that has been studying the Atlanteans since the first time Nemo decided to attack the surface world. Here. We see Captain America dressing, of all things, at Admiral October in search of the of the Red October, huh? You're really pushing it with the uh, references, huh, Chip Zdarsky? And we see that Steve Rogers and Tom Holland, Tom Holland being the original Human Torch from the 1940s, as they try to try to talk to Admiral October. And she, in return, says, no, they're not going to take it because Nemo dared attack and kill American soldiers. And, they, and he says, says, yes, Nemo is going to attack the base soon, but let us try to reason with him out. And she says, no, that he should go and sign autographs for the soldiers and that they will try to deal with Nemo when and if he attacks. This is, Steve is still trying to reason with her, but he decides to give up. He decides to go sign some autographs while the Human Torch, Torch looks, goes and decides to work on his book. This is all actually just a plot. They the, the distract the soldiers on the base while Winter Soldier sneaks into it and finds the information because they think this base might actually have the bomb that Nemo is going to use to attack the surface world. They, that's why they think he's going to attack the base soon. So Winter Soldier sneaks in with no one noticing him. He uh, wonders why he isn't the guy who goes around signing autographs, but then he thinks again to himself that he probably wouldn't be very good at it since he's the Winter Soldier and he goes around killing people people, and has always killed people, and when he, even when he was Bucky. He, so he sneaks to the base, sending in, uh, using codes he probably stole, and uh, holding his rifle while sneaking from shadow to shadow, while Steve Rogers, Captain America, greets the troops while they all, all are loving the fact that he has come to visit them. The Captain America, the, the prime hero of America, as he salutes the soldiers. Some of them aren't happy to be meeting him so they because they're not sure that he's not actually Hydra Cap. And Captain America America apologizes for him and says, Yes, I can understand your reasons and your antipathy towards me, but I am Captain America and I am not that Captain um, Captain America who betrayed America and tried to kill kill American soldiers. Well, the guy isn't taking too much of it. We keep having heroes like Nemo and you, or the guy who pretended to be you, keep attacking America. And Steve Rogers can all look forlornly onward as the guy marches away. That he's, 
as the guy marches away and he's tired of hearing all these people trying to take selfies with him. Well, the man's friend, his uh, his uh, co-mate, tells him not to be too hard on him, and, and uh, Captain America understands. As afterwards, Captain America and Tom Holland, Holland having having given Bucky enough time to enter the base and look around, go off to see the. Randall Peterson, who they had begun to suspect he was guilty of something. While we switch over back to Nemor, who is being addressed by his scientists that the missiles that they have are almost complete and they, they will soon be able to be used. While he goes and sees his sees the his counselor, and he once again tells him about the Peterson family and what Nemor should do to them. Well, Nemor just looks on a bit forlornly, knowing that he might, yes, or might no, have to do something. Well, we're back to the Winter Soldier, and he's sneaking through the base when suddenly someone notices him. And what happens? Well, it's quite easy to say. Say the Winter Soldier knocks the guy unconscious, and then he has to deal with the ed a scientist who's part of the base's personnel. She, he asked that he, she listen to him because he, he wants to. He and Captain America want to stop Nemo before there's any fighting, and that it, she should help him. And she, this, and we don't know. Maybe in the next issue we'll know if she will or not. He does give her, her his gun, to, so that she could trust him. And we're back over to the Petersons with Nate Peterson addressing Captain America and the Human Torch. He, he, Captain America comes in to see Randall, and that she, she can't do anything to stop him, but he's trying to be as polite as possible. He just wants to see. Randall and he addresses Randall and Randall is happy to see Cap and they reminisce about about their times in the war and about how how uh, how the times have changed and about how Captain America stay had say the same while Randall is getting near the time of the end of his life. He he tells him that Nemor needs help, Steve. And that, and, and Steve Rogers, Captain America, just listens on, knowing the, tr knowing that he can he whether or not he can do it or not is, might not have a choice if he has to fight anymore over this, and we, and he, uh, this is artwork is good once again. This, uh, penciler, Carlos Magna is really doing good artwork here, uh, and uh, Steve tells, still tells. Randall, that he'll he's going to do all he can, but he can't be put in a situation where he has to fight anymore. Captain America tells him it's good to see him and that he'll see him again once this is over, so they can talk some more about this. Randall salutes Captain America as he leaves, and Captain America wishes him farewell. He can only look on. Oh, and Captain America gives him a salute himself. And the artwork is good, and it's very heroic. I, it's a shame Marvel doesn't spend more on artists. And we have Jim Hammond and Captain America, America questioning Nay Randall about what is happening while she feeds her fish, fish. And they want to know what is going on here. When suddenly, suddenly water comes streaming into the house, and Captain America, America gets ready to fight while, while Jim Hammond turn flames on and turns into the human torch. Nemor, using his water to levitate himself, enters the house. And he addresses Captain America that he could not leave well enough alone. And he attacks them while they try to stop him. He sends the, his Steve off into the ocean. And the human torch, Jim Hammond, follows to save his friend because he knows he's afraid of water. So, Nemor addresses Nay, Nay Randall, saying, I'm here to see your father. Nate Peterson says they haven't betrayed him, and then Randall comes out to address Nemor. But it turns out it, this is the last thing he will ever do. The stress has gotten to Randall, and he dies dies of exhaustion, well, exhaustion because he had been so close to death already. All he can say to Nemor is, "Who will protect you now?" Well, Nemor begs him to forgive him that he did not want his death. Captain America and Jim Hammond rush back to try and save the Randalls and try to stop Nemor from doing anything stupid. But it is too late. Randall Peterson has succumbed to his old age and died. Nemor flies off in misery and with tears streaming down his face that he has caused this. And Nay Peterson says that she will tell Captain America what is happening. On my final thoughts, this is a good issue, but it's rather 
not very actiony. Uh, there's not really anything really that has been said better in the previous two issues. So you can pick it up, but you'll not get anything really new about it because they don't go into anything new. It's just filler. So I'll see you all again soon. Bye. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Bye.